today we've come out to this site uh, to replace this fan motor. It was diagnosed as um, faulty, so they had gone and locked it out. Um, so we've come back with the part. Uh, everything was supposed to be nice and easy, but we've come and we've found this. Look at that, the control, <coughs> that was tripped. Uh, it's actually tripped the main breaker too, we've got no power. Just something coming, so yeah, we're gonna have something interesting here. We'll um, gonna go ahead and get that fan motor replaced first, but uh, then we'll jump into trying to work out what has caused that. Go forward to. Sorry, I wasn't paying much attention there. Um, pull the just just pull the earth out oh, earth out last. I know we've got it isolated. Earth out last. Earth out last. Okay. It's just always the best practice. Earth out last and earth in first. Earth out last in first. Yeah. Go. How's your hand? Can I just cut it on each side? <clears throat> so I probably should have cut here and then pulled it out on the bottom. Oh shit. <laughs> so we had a bit of a mishap. I was uh, not paying much attention and unfortunately we've cut the uh, the wrong one. So it's a learning experience for, uh, for the apprentice there. <laughs> anyway, I should have been paying more attention to what they were cutting. That's all right, live and learn. <laughs> so all, all we're gonna do is basically just take this one, move it there because obviously the wire <laughs> will be long enough to get to there. Uh, yeah, good stuff. There you go, like nothing ever happened, eh? <laughs> uh, let's keep, continue on. Yeah, new one, getting it in place, and then we'll um, rewire both of them. Working our way through it, it's like getting the, uh, the, this one wired in. Because of the design of this one, how they've got the, the cables run through that, we're gonna have to, we're basically just taking the lid off here to prop it up to then run that other cable across and down through there. Bit of messing around, but we got it in there. So that thing actually slides. Anyway, uh, cool. All right, finish wiring those in. Try to make it as neat as possible, but uh, you know, never easy. We'll jump into trying to work out what has taken out this board. I'm gonna go start through testing components. Now, none of these have tripped. Um, you can see here, it looks like the relay that sends power to, uh, actually, I'll, I'll double check that, but yeah. yeah look at the damage, eh? Hey? It's uh, pretty crazy. <laughs> that fuse is dim blown. That one's not widening for some reason. Uh, anyway, I'll just keep, keep doing a bit of a visual, see if anything stands out at me. So visually, nothing looks bad, except for obviously the burn mark in the board. Anyway, so I'm gonna go through with my meter now. <coughs> Got it set to ohms, and we're down to earth there, so we'll just see if we're getting a reading. All right, well, we'll start with incoming power. Uh, Okay, that's fine. Um, I'll go through and test the the other components as well, just to start seeing if we get any kind of readings um, that are going to indicate a, a short to earth. So that's fine because it's um it's mega. It's really what we're looking for is a direct short um, or something that kind of stands out as potentially being low. But that's mega ohms. That's fine. Um, but yeah, we'll go through and we're going to test this electrically. So, so far I haven't found anything. I'm about to pull the board off there to see where the tracks to that part follow. Um, but we're just having a look at the, if the fan motor sees, but I mean, belt's pretty loose, but apart from that, it's it's not seized. So yeah, shut the cover back on, man. Cheers. Yeah, the damage there is pretty impressive. Wow. So just following the tracks, I, accidentally did that anyway uh just following the track so this is our input supply side here so the, the burn does appear to be on the output supply side um so you can see there mains output supply but i am getting no reading across anything um you know no um compressor readings uh no indoor fan readings 
Um, so yeah, we'll keep looking into it. I might, I'll test some of the points actually. We'll see if we can get, these are just to earth, but you know, again, so this is, I think this is that coil. I mean, even if I do get a reading here, we know that the board's a problem. <laughs> on my input supply side. No, it's that'll just be connected. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep going through and see if I get any like direct shorts, but I mean, as it stands, no, nothing, yeah, keep having a look. So as it stands, I've tested everything, uh, all the motors, nothing's coming up with a reading to earth. Um, the fact that our breaker has also tripped, I've seen boards blow before that just take out the control bloody um, circuit breaker here, not the actual mains breaker. So I am leaning towards a surge. Now, you know, I would have thought that that means it would have mainly affected our input supply, but you know, electricity is, does some weird things sometimes, but electrically I'm, I'm confident to say that this unit is okay. And uh, so we'll just have to order a new board, come back and then do some more testing. Just wanted to quickly have a look at the terminals of the compressor, just to see if I could see anything on this side. Again, I was, I was getting no readings, but yeah, as it stands, man. Um, yeah, I think we're just gonna have to order that board and, and come back. I was just gonna do one last test before we uh, packed up and headed out. I was just gonna test the wires. Because we, we basically, when we rocked up, we tested power here, right, with the isolator on, and we had nothing coming through, all right? So I had just assumed that the breaker was off, which again, is probably another thing I shouldn't have done. But here we go, check this out. The breaker isn't tripped. So that's really interesting. I wonder why I wasn't getting any power while this on to here. So I'm just gonna test the cables from here to here and see if I've got any brakes or anything. So I'm getting continuity between, uh, basically I'm testing from you know the red terminal here, the red terminal over there, nothing between the wires. What we'll quickly do is just test between the, the phases this way. So that's fine. One to three. That's fine. And two to three. That's fine. Basically what I'm gonna do now is I've killed power um, to all of these. Obviously that one's already tripped, we won't turn that one on. I'm gonna turn power on at the isolator, see if I actually get power up there. Um, and yeah, uh, basically all we're doing is energizing the tops of these circuit breakers. So, touch wood. <clears throat> all right, nothing went bang. That's a, that's a nice, that's a good sign there. Just make sure we're getting power, the correct power. And we're now getting power. That's super interesting, man. Huh, okay. So I've just gone through and tested, uh, turned on each circuit breaker one at a time, and we're now getting power to the top of our contactors. So yeah, really weird, man. I'm not sure why we weren't getting power when we tested down here originally. Um, really weird. Regardless, um, what we'll end up, like I said, we're gonna have to replace the board anyway. Um, electrically, everything else is fine, no shorts to earth, and all my windings between my compressor and fan motors, all measuring out um, uh, the, uh, the same resistance, even resistance, they're all three-phase motors. So yeah, we'll just leave this thing isolated, come back with the board and replace it and see how we go. Okay, we are back today. I've uh, got the board, let's get stuck into it. Alrighty, I am going to start taking this board out. I'll put the new one in. Uh, I might just quickly do some other checks. Uh, honestly, I've, I've already checked for everything anyway, but some of these connections did feel pretty loose. I don't know if I mentioned that in the last part, but you can kind of see there's a, there's a lot of wriggle room there. Um, I'm just, you know, I didn't find any direct shorts, so now I'm trying to look for other things that could potentially have caused this board to blow. Um, yeah, so we'll go through, tighten up all these as well, so they... Sit, um, sit snug on the board. Um, quickly tighten up all the electrical connections as well. Fire it up, make sure our fans run and everything runs. Yeah, new one's out. You can see the burn marks all there. Um, I think I already showed you the back of the board the last time. I uh, I put that hole in there the last time. I didn't hit it that hard, but uh, I tapped it and it kind of crumbled. So, but still, it's pretty impressive damage. You can kind of see a lot of these terminals are black note so it's kind of hard to tell if it's like overheating or if it's just residue from like it almost seems like overheating because it almost looks like it's plated eh? All right. kind of see the discoloration of it 
just looks darker than usual. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna go through, tighten these up, get them back on. Right, new board in, I've gone through, like I said, tighten up all those. They're a bit tight in here. I thought about potentially redoing this, but <clears throat> I think I've got enough, I've kind of positioned it so that the, see the insulated one right next to that, which is obviously the way it was supposed to do, or supposed to be, and I'm sure it was that way anyway, but um, anyway, just make sure again, they're not touching. Uh, quickly go through, tighten up the electrical connections, then we will reapply power. All right, gone through and tighten them all. Some of them, there's nothing that was crazy loose. We've got a couple of quarter turns um, out of some of the ones down here on the uh, the load side. So, you know, maybe it all contributes. But anyway, I'm, I'm confident. Uh, we've done enough checks. Let's get this ready to turn on. So we've still got power isolated, obviously. Um, yeah, I'm confident we're ready to turn this thing on. All right, stand off on the side. Hopefully nothing blows up. That is a good sign. Indoor fan just kicked on then. We're calling for two stages heat. All right, just testing the amperage of our fan. Um, I'll make sure that that's within spec. Uh, probably have to actually pull it off. <coughs> Still waiting for this compressor to kick in. Okay, compressor one's just kicked in. Both our fan motors are spinning. Try to secure this a bit better. Something's making a bit of a vibration noise there, but both spinning the right way. That's good. Get the amperage of our fan uh, compressor too. All right, both compressors are in. Just pull out, seems fine. I'll get. I'll confirm that. But and 6.8. That seems fine as well. Um, all right. I'm going to check the back of this. <coughs> Yeah, we don't know if the fan mode has been replaced, um, but even just gives us a bit of a reference. So indoor fan, full load amps, four. The compressor is times two, 9.5 per phase. So, okay, as it stands, we're reading within specs there. Again, I'll pop this off and make sure that fan is, uh, has been replaced. So we are actually within spec. So far, looking good. I've just gone ahead and probed up so we can get a bit of an indication on if there are any other issues. I'm um, just going to wait for this thing to stabilise out. Uh, so we've been running for, I don't know, five minutes now. Um, so yeah, we'll let it stabilise out and we'll start having a look at this. I'm, um, I'm using MeasureQuick this time. Um, like, I've, I've used it before. I just never, I don't know, I just kept reverting back to the other one. So I'm going to give this another try and see if I um, like it again. Uh, I like the way it's laid out. I just, yeah, I don't know why I keep going back to the other one. It's probably just easier uh, for me to use the other one, I guess. But yeah, we'll try this. So... <laughs> I remembered pretty quickly why I uh, stopped using this. Because <coughs> I always wanted to see the dish size line temp, and it's not an option, at least as far as I'm aware, it's not an option. So you have to come to like your probe manager section, and it keeps showing it to me in Fahrenheit, and that's really annoying for someone who doesn't use Fahrenheit. <laughs> now, I know that like, uh, what is it, two, 212 is 100, I believe, and 32 is zero. But I'm not gonna be able to remember, you know, I can get a rough idea that maybe my discharge temp there sitting at like 65 or 60, 70 or something along those lines. But I'm already thinking about too many other things. I don't wanna to have to keep going back and looking at uh, at uh, temperature charts to get a to get a, a, a degree Celsius, which is what we use here in Australia. And I think everyone else uses, so anyway, doesn't matter. Um, I will keep playing around with this. It's looking like it's potentially low. Um, if I can get back to where I want to be. Oh my God. <laughs> Give me a sec. Okay, we're back to the page. So, all right. Obviously, we got low VAP. Uh, low condensing. I mean, according to this, what's it, what's it calling for? Uh, this is the cool thing about this app is you can obviously just click on these things and it tells you what it's, uh, what it's looking for. Oh, no, there you go. It made me lie me. <laughs> I swear it does that. Anyway, uh, high superheat. We do have subcooling, so what we might end up doing, I might just open that TXV up just a touch and see if that helps my superheat and my VAP temp climb up. Well, my um, VAP temp climb up and my superheat go down. Um, yeah, we might do that now and we'll, uh, we'll see if that helps us. So, <coughs> made a slight 
change, uh, not as much as I was hoping. Now, I am obviously getting my sub cooling reading from my discharge line. There's no liquid line on this thing. So that's a skewed reading, right? So I, I'm still leaning towards this thing being low. Um, we'll make a, maybe one more adjustment. If nothing changes, then um, yeah, we'll have to go down the path of looking for a leak. It's an R22 unit as well, so it's, uh, yeah, anyway. So yeah, <clears throat> after a couple of adjustments, uh, this is basically all I'm getting. I, I think this thing's low. Um, the, obviously, like I said, taking our subcooling number from our discharge temp, I'm gonna assume that there's actually no subcooling. High superheat, so what we can do uh, is I'll shut this thing down, we'll go get the leak detector and just do a quick little sniff and see if we can find something. I know what the uh, first thing I want to start with. <laughs> I noticed this before. I imagine that's on there for a reason. Uh, so nothing comes out there. I want to find out here. There it is. Um, I'll see if I can tighten that to a point where it doesn't leak, but have a quick sniff of everything else. Uh, yeah, so I've tried twisting it as much as I can and I cannot get it to stop leaking, so. I'm gonna say that's our that's our culprit there, but I can't do anything about that today. I'll we'll have to come back and fix that another day. But honestly, you know, I, I absolutely love these shredded core removal tools. Uh, sorry, not shredded core removal tools. The um, shredded depressors, but this maybe could have been a, a, an example of if you go too far, you can actually bend the shredder, and then and then what? You kind of cooked after that. So I really just use these just to crack. And then that, because that's all, you're just trying to read the pressures, right? So anyway, um, I don't know if that's the case, but yeah, we'll have to come back and uh, rectify this. So uh, outside of that, system's up and running now. Um, it'll serve, a, it'll serve uh, a purpose, I guess. It'll um, at least add some conditioning to the space. The pressures weren't too bad. So for the time being, it'll, uh, it'll do, so we can come back and rectify that. All right, we are back uh, to do that leak search. Um, like I said, fairly confident that the uh, leak is that um, Schroeder core depressor there. We already confirmed that that was leaking, but we'll go over everything else, pull out the gas, see how short we are. It's R22, so that we can just pull it out and reuse. Uh, pump up with nitro, do that, back it, and get this thing up and running, and then we'll uh, we'll dial in that superheat. Um, because from memory, it was probably been a couple of weeks since I've been here. That was a bit out, so let's jump into it. Bottles on back, so just doing a bit of a visual as well. Obviously, so we know that one's leaking, but this one here is incredibly oily too. Look at that! Wow. I've got um, I've got Schrader cores here, so we're gonna go. I was gonna go ahead and replace them all anyway. Um, but yeah, I'll keep doing a visual. Get the leak detector out. I did a quick one the last time, but you know, let's check again. Uh, just did a real quick hit in the evaporator. No hits there. No hits on that side of the coil. Um, I'm not going too in depth. I'm literally just kind of, you know, refrigerant's heavier than air. It drops usually. That thing's very sensitive so that if there is something there, I usually pick it up and then I go further. No hits along here. No hits on this side. The only two hits I'm getting are the, yeah, Schrader core and the depressor that's there. So, yeah, I feel pretty confident. I'm going to start, um, this thing's almost ready to start um, reclaiming. Very confident that we can uh, start ripping out the gas, see how low we are, do a pressure test as well. And if that indicates that there is still a leak after we've replaced everything, we'll continue further down the leak test path. 
So refrigerant charge, R22, nine kilos. I did also find out before returning that um, somebody replaced the TXV as well. Uh, I'm not sure why. Uh, it's not, you know, yeah. So that's why I'm gonna go over and basically once we've got the correct charge in this thing, I'm gonna go over and make sure that everything's working properly. Well, that's always good, isn't it? Okay. Anyway, I, uh, I'm gonna get this off, clean this pipe up. Look, like I was making good, good contact, eh? I don't know, I'll, I'll uh, yeah, I'll get this off and clean it up and we'll uh, secure it and uh, re-insulate it. There's no way that was making great contact with the pipe. Look at that, we're sitting here. Uh, okay, I'm gonna stop it there. We we'll basically pulled out just six kilos, so three short. Um, but yeah, I don't wanna suck any further than that because we've got leaks. Just gonna remove the Schraders and this is a pretty good example of what can happen when you uh, use those depressor tools but you go in too tight. It's, uh, it's bent. So that was the one that was leaking. And then this is the one that I just put mine on and because I knew I was replacing it, I went down all the way too. And you can see that one's bent as well. So yeah, just, that's why I always only just crack them. That's all you need. I'll throw in some caps with the O-rings in there as well. All right, start the press test. Well, that's not ideal. Look at that. Motherfucker. Okay. Uh, I just gave it a little nip up and it seems to have stopped, so... Yeah. Started the brush test again. Brush test looks pretty good. Um, hopefully that comes across. So, I think we might um, get this thing on back now. And uh, then we can get to restrapping that. Annoyingly, I didn't have any of those copper... Um, copper things in the car, uh, the way you, the, the copper, copper straps. Uh, so all I've got is cable ties. Not ideal, but uh, you know, we should be fine. Beautiful, back's underway. Get started on this. All right, there we go. Cleaned it up, it's gonna sit on the back there. Even with the uh, emery paper, man, that cork suck is a fucking nightmare to get off. <laughs> all right, and there we go. Pretty happy with that. Back's down to about uh, 950 microns at the moment, so that's been running for maybe five, 10 minutes. And we're gonna be sweet. Oh man, that's not looking promising. Um, this thing's down to about 750. Maybe I'll get a wriggle on, eh? <laughs> if it can stay below a thousand, I will be very happy. Stabilized out at around 870, so that's gonna be good enough. Um, yeah, we'll get charging. All right, we're underway. I'm trying to go through the uh, <coughs> high side, but you know, there's not that much you can do in this situation. I'm not charging through the low side just yet. Okay. <laughs> I think that's leaking. <laughs> uh, slowed down, so turn power back on now. We'll get this thing to run, and we'll charge the rest that way. Press has just started. Start charging. Okay, got the fresh bottle on. We're fully charged. I, uh, I just packed up my gear just in case it does start bucketing with rain, but probes are all on there now. Um, I'll quickly go through. Initial thoughts, super heat looks a little high. Um, see if I can scroll this with the, there we go. Just charge temps, all right. Fly and I've got five, that's pretty good. Oop. Across. Temps a bit, 12.2. Honestly, that's all looking pretty good. I reckon we just adjust our TXV a touch. I remember I played around with it the last time. Uh, just did a little half turn. Looking a bit better. We'll just see where that stabilizes out at. This thing's looking really nice, man. Um, yeah, super heats. Very nice, sub cooling's nice, dish size line is nice. Ah, the one downside of using this um, <laughs> tablet is that it's uh, very glary. Anyway, temp split, 12.3. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with how this thing's running now, man. It's, uh, <coughs> it's had a fair, fair few works done to it, so. Anyway, uh, get a, hopefully get a few more years left out of it. I'm, uh, I'm gonna leave this one here. Thank you for watching.